It started as a normal day at work. I was working the long shift and everyone else had already left for the night. I had been working long enough that I wasn't worried about being the last one here. I was in a pretty safe and well lit area and the security gate was closed for the night. I don't know why corporate wanted me to stay an extra hour after we closed. I pulled the cash drawer from the register and went about my routine as normal. After making sure everything came out right, I grabbed the keys from the security room to lock the drawer up. I unlocked the door and left it open, and like always, I had a slight moment of panic when I think about the door closing. I chuckled and reassured myself. Even if the door closed, it doesn't lock automatically. There's even a lock on this side of the door. I turned to leave when I heard something crash through the front doors and gate. I grabbed the keys out of the other side of the door and locked this side. I didn't have to worry about flipping the light off. The security room is reinforced and you can't see the light from the outside if the door is closed. I thought someone was breaking in. There are better places to steal from, just a few hundred feet away. I work in one of those furniture rent to own places. We do have some TVs and computers, most of which are in here with me. That was my biggest fear at the time. That someone would break in here to take the more valuable items and find me. I didn't really have to worry about that though. What was in here was far worse than a couple of thieves. I held my breath for fear of being discovered and listened for any noises. While the security room was reinforced, it wasn't soundproofed and the sounds I heard through the door were very disturbing. It wasn't human. In fact, it didn't sound like any animal I had ever heard in this area. Where I live and work is out in the country, so I know the sounds of the local wildlife. I could hear furniture and appliances being ripped to shreds, and the roar of the mysterious beast chilled me to the core. It sounded like a demon. The tones and shrieks in a single grunt from it were terrifying. I will never forget the sound for as long as I live, which won't be long if it finds me. It busted through the thick wooden doors that led to the back room where I was hiding. I heard the door splinter and explode. Tears fell from my eyes. I was certain that was the end of me. The beast ripped through the back room and then it came back. I heard it getting closer to me, growling the whole way. It had discovered the security room. It rammed into the door, and it took everything in me to not cry out in fear. It roared in frustration and dragged its claws across the door. Have you ever heard metal scrape across metal? It sounded like that, but a thousand times worse. I covered my ears and cowered in the furthest corner from the door. It was a relief when I heard it move away. I slowly opened the door and paused every time it creaked. Luckily, I don't see it back here with me. I stood, frozen, and took in the damage the creature had inflicted on the back room. The doors were pulled from the hinges, what was left of them anyway. Shards of the doors had impaled the walls across from them. There was wood everywhere, and I couldn't tell if what was scattered around me would even make up the two double doors that used to be there. I couldn't see the front door from where I stood, but I was sure that they had suffered a worse fate. I looked at the extra stock in the back room. It had been completely, utterly demolished. There were a few chair legs and what used to be lamps lying around. Other than that, everything else was a mess of wood, metal, glass and fabric. Nothing was recognisable. It was just piled in the floor haphazardly. I was in shock. We had to destroy furniture before, but it had always taken multiple people and a lot of effort. What terrified me the most though, was when I turned back to the security room. Impossibly deep claw marks mar the door. 
they were twice as wide as the largest bear in the area and higher up than a bear could reach on all fours. The punctures stretched all the way from the top of the door to the bottom. I stared, creeping towards the remains of the double doors. I didn't hear the beast anymore. If I could just get to my car, I would be safe. I could leave and get help. That's when I heard it again. It was coming back. I ran to the security room and closed the door as softly and quickly as I could. Why hadn't I called for help yet? Well, I didn't realise I had my phone with me. I usually would leave my phone on my desk, but this time I'd put it in my pocket. With a small sigh of relief, I dialed 911. It never rang. I tried again and again and again, but it never went through. I stared at my phone in disbelief. The words displayed there killed any hope I had. No service. There's a... The service at work could be spotty, but I always had enough to make a call, even in the security room. I hear the beast coming back towards me now. It's right outside of the room again, and I can hear it breathing. I think it knows I'm in here. I pray this door holds. My body was sore and chilled from sleeping on the concrete floor. My head pounded from lack of sleep. What little I'd gotten was more from me passing out than from wanting to sleep. I was dazed and disoriented when I came to. I had hoped against hope that this was a nightmare from reading too many no sleep stories before bed. It had happened before. But... Reality is harsh. I grabbed my phone from where I'd been charging it last night and checked the time. It was after 10am. My next day's shift had already begun. I thought maybe whatever had been here had left in the night and normalcy had returned. There would of course be questions of how the store got in such a condition. My relief vanished when I came to my senses. My hand was on the lock, about to open the door. I stopped and listened. Silence. I strained my ears to hear anything. Anything at all. Nothing. It was after 10am. Everyone should have been here by now. Even if they were late, someone would have been here some time after 8. I would have been able to hear their voices and someone would have noticed the disaster and called the police. They would have called me since I was the last to leave and supposed to have been the first one to arrive. I dared to crack the door open and peek outside. I couldn't hear whatever creature was out there either. This was my chance to escape. If I could get to my car, I could drive to the police station or home. Home seemed like the preferable option. If the police needed me, they could find me. I tiptoed through the empty place where the doors once stood to the main area of the room. If I hadn't been expecting it, I would have been shocked at the devastation. There wasn't so much as a chair left recognisable. What did shock me though were the large glass windows and security gate. There wasn't any glass left. I could see the shards lying both outside and inside the window. The security gate lay on the opposite side of the room, a couple of hundred feet away from where it had previously been attached to the wall. It was a mangled heap of metal, crumpled from both the impact of the beast and the impact of flying across the room. I rushed into the office to grab my keys so I could make my escape. I stopped suddenly when I saw my car. It had been flipped on its side. I started to move again intent on taking the work vehicle instead, when I saw that it too had been flipped over. Our work vehicles weren't little cars like mine was. They were vehicles made to deliver furniture and were much heavier than the average personal vehicle. I wasn't going to be able to drive out of here and I sure wasn't going to be walking either. That's when I heard a scream. It started as a horrific sound, 
and changed to one of extreme pain before being cut off. Whoever had been out there was dead, and I was no hero. I wanted to live, so I was not going to be running out to save someone else. I did, however, run back to my security room. This thing was hunting people in the area. I would not be an easy meal. It's been a couple of hours since then. I realized that I was not the only one stuck in the area. I wasn't the only one being hunted. I glued myself to the door and strained my ears to listen. Every time I heard a scream or the beast next door, I would move. I have a good little supply heap going at the moment. The break room is right beside the security room and we always kept it stocked. I grabbed some fabric from the destroyed furniture for something soft to sit on. If I sound like I'm brave and adapting well, I'm not. I am absolutely terrified, especially when it comes back. I've realized something else too. When I was looking outside, I didn't see any cars on the highway. It's a pretty major one. There's always traffic and sirens to be heard. The trains behind the store hasn't ran either. It goes by several times a day. There aren't any animals outside. It's all so eerily quiet. When it is in my store, I stay quiet and check for ways to escape. I tried calling over Wi-Fi, but I'm not tech savvy and the internet still won't load. One of the emails I sent went through, but I don't think my friend believed me. It's almost like the boy who cried wolf stories. I got YouTube and Twitter to load and left as many posts and comments as I could but most people just thought I was trolling. It left again. I can hear it next door. I was able to dial 911 a little while ago. I think they got enough information, but there was so much static, I can't be sure. Hello, what is your emergency? I'm trapped at work. There's something outside. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? There is a wild animal at my work. The address is... Beep... I tried again, and I think they got the address this time. I can hear sirens now. The first sounds besides me, the beast, and the screams of its victims. They're getting closer. I think the operator heard me. The car stopped outside of the store, and I dared to open the door and move to look outside. There were three cop cars outside. The officers rushed outside with their guns drawn. That's when I saw it. The beast came into view. It was the size of a bear. And by that, I mean it was the same size on all fours as a large bear standing up. Its shortest claw was longer than my forearm. It looked like a warped bear straight out of someone's worst nightmare. It didn't look natural. It was like someone took parts of great predators and fused them together. I would never forget the look of it. It will haunt my nightmares if I make it out. I watched and listened in silent horror. Gunfire filled the air and the creature roared. Not in pain, but anger. Time seemed to slow as I watched it rip the officers apart. Blood and gore rained everywhere. It was then that it turned and looked at me. Its eyes seemed to smirk at me. I could see them from where I stood. I shuddered with the knowledge that if I saw them closer, I would be at its mercy. Not bothering to remain quiet, I ran back to the security room with a beast on my tail. It was playing with me. There was no way I would have made it back if it hadn't. I slammed and locked the door, not feeling any relief. It had always known I was in here, and had only ventured away for easier prey. It threw itself at the door with the most sickening crunch for what felt like hours. By the time it grew tired of the game, the door was dented inwards. It is still sturdy and holding, but I don't know how much longer that will last. I don't think I actually slept last night. I was afraid of it breaking in during the night. I could hear it breathing outside of the door. It seems to like the challenge that the door holds. 
I did try to barricade the door with the TV boxes we had been storing in here. It didn't really make me feel much better since they were so easy to move. I did climb up on the shelves we had and huddled there for the night. If it had broken in, I might have been out of reach. I tried to call for help again, but all I got was static. Sometime in the night, the sirens from the cars died. I'm not sure I'm brave enough to try go for one of them though. They were all the way on the other side of the four lane highway. I have to wait for it to go on another killing spree, as morbid as that sounds, to even consider it. I'm not sure there are many people other than me left. It's kind of obvious that someone is keeping people out of the area right now. Who knows why they haven't made a rescue attempt yet. My only hope is that someone more heavily armed comes to investigate the missing officers. I'm currently playing a dangerous game. When the creature leaves, I leave. Every time. It's easier to listen for it to leave since I've been straining to listen at every little sound. I've been rummaging through the debris in the back for anything I can use as a weapon. I took some tools and nails and fashioned a better barricade. I would like to be able to keep the creature out of the store altogether, but I'm not foolish enough to attempt it. Instead, I'm focusing on some type of weapon for myself. I took several shards of glass and glued and tied it to the end of a chair leg. I used another piece of glass to sharpen the other end of the leg. I ended up slicing my hand open on it though. I had to run back to the security room because I heard it charging back. He could smell the blood on my hand. I had the newly made barricade in place and it is actually working pretty well. I could hear it sniffing at the door and had to quickly wrap my hand with a spare strip of fabric to be able to hold my weapon. I hope I don't have to use it. If I do, it will be out of desperation. Every time I leave the room, it is with a weapon in hand and phone in my pocket, just in case I'm able to make a go for it. I left the room at the sound of multiple screams and tried to psych myself up for an escape. All three cars were still sitting upright, almost as if the creature wanted me to hope. It clearly has human level intelligence. I still don't know or care what it is. Just as I was contemplating the long run to a car, I saw a brave soul make a go for it. There were still screams coming from down the street, so the monster was distracted. I could have made a run for it too, but I'm glad I waited. The man had a shorter distance because he was on the same side of the road as the cars. I silently cheered him on and waited. He made it to the closed door. The car started to go, and I was excited for him. It was possible to get out. In my excitement, I hadn't realized the screams had stopped, or the sound of a large animal galloping down the highway. I didn't realize until it had caught up to the car and knocked it over. The man hadn't even made it a hundred feet. I watched in horror as the creature pulled the man out and started eating him while he was still alive. I looked up, and I swear to God, it smirked at me. It sauntered off in a different direction, almost like it was daring me to try the same thing as the man. I'm not going to make it to a car, but I might make it to the roof. I was back in the security room with more supplies. I had raided the break room again and had managed to recover my water bottle from the remains of my desk. I had another bottle I'd found and I filled them both to the brim. I found a large patch of fabric that I was able to make into a bag big enough to fit my supplies. I used another strip of fabric to tie my weapon to my waist. The creature was back and banging on the door again. Have you ever been terrified for so long that it just doesn't faze you anymore? I was numb. My focus solely on my task and my spear never far away. I would have to wait until much later to try for the ladder. Did I mention I am usually paralyzed by my fear of heights? I guess in the game of life and death, the other fears take a back seat when trying to survive. Night had fallen when the beast left the store again. I didn't have to strain my hearing anymore. I could hear every move it made clearly. 
It can probably see in the dark, but there was a chance I was willing to take. I knew where the ladder was from driving around the building and taking the trash out multiple times. It was on the furthest side of the building. I waited to open the door until I knew the creature was out of my hearing range, and then a bit more, just to be safe. I eased the door open and made my way as quickly and quietly as I could to the broken windows. There was no point going through the door when there were so many exits now. This was the first time I'd been outside of the store in four days. It was so quiet outside, which meant the beast wasn't hunting. I had to move quickly since I had no idea where it actually was. I had my hand on the ladder when I heard the beast roar. I chanced a glance behind me and saw it rushing at me at full speed. I started climbing as fast as I could, heart beating uncontrollably. There was no denying this was the absolute most terrifying moment of my life and quite possibly the end. I had to have been about 20 feet off the ground when it reached me. I looked down thinking I was out of reach. It was the worst decision of my life. I could see every demented detail of it. It was like Dr. Frankenstein had come back and decided to make a new species. I could see the stitches in its flesh through missing patches of fur which was different lengths and colours. The front of its head ended in a skull. A skull that looked more like an ancient species of wolf than a modern bear. I started moving again when I saw its paws move. The claws were metal. I scurried as fast as I could when I felt a blazing pain swipe through the back of my calf. That leg slipped and I hung there for a moment. A sound, almost like a laugh, came from the beast below me. I moved up again and put my leg on the next rung, but it couldn't hold me from the damage that had been done. My other leg slipped and one of my hands. I was holding on for life, praying I didn't fall. It would be over. I struggled for what seemed like forever, trying to get my feet under me. My remaining hands started to slip as well. By some miracle, I managed to get my good leg under me and climbed the rest of the way up. An angered roar echoed below me. At some point, I think I passed out from exhaustion, relief and blood loss. Mainly blood loss. My leg was shredded to the bone. It was dark and bright at the same time. It took me several moments before I was fully aware of what was occurring. Gunfire sounded all around me, and the light that had woken me was coming from an overhead helicopter. I dragged myself to the edge of the building to see what was going on. Armoured vehicles were everywhere, and the beast was surrounded by men in full tactical wear. I watched the beast go down to my relief. It was finally over. I heard footsteps behind me and turned to see a man walking towards me from the rope hanging from the helicopter. It's alright now. It's over. I cried with relief. They wanted me to get in the helicopter, but I refused. I was terrified of heights after all. Stupid fear came back after the beast was down. They nodded and got someone to get me down to the ground. They had a paramedic look at my leg and hand while they questioned me. I told them almost everything. Something was telling me not to tell them what I saw up close. When they asked me if I'd seen it, I told them I had from a distance. It looked like a giant bear. I hadn't looked at it when it clawed me. I was too scared. They believed me. Why not? I'd just been rescued by them. Why would I lie? I don't know why, but the conversation I heard, that should have been out of earshot, made me realise that it was a smart decision on my part. I can't believe it got away from us. It was just a matter of time. It was a good opportunity to study it, though. I agree, it's very intelligent. It's a good thing the survivor didn't see it. It's a good thing the survivor didn't see it up close. Huh, <laughs> yeah. We would have had to kill her if she had. Government secrets and all. I stopped listening after that. The less I knew, the better. I was lucky to be alive, and I will take the secret to my grave.